Next on Ask the Tech Guy, how to create a custom email address. Ask the Tech Guy comes to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees LastPass can ensure they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether they're working in the office or remotely. Visit LastPass.com slash Twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Ask the Tech Guy is brought to you by LastPass. Visit LastPass.com slash Twit. Hey everybody, Leo Laporte here. I am your tech guy. It's time for the Ask the Tech Guy show. Uh, this question doesn't come from any particular person, but from many people. I get it all the time. It's also something I recommend highly. How to create a custom email address. Ideally, you know, most of us have email addresses that are something like leo at gmail.com or aol.com or hotmail.com. But ideally, your email address wouldn't be tied to any particular company, your internet service provider or a service like Gmail. Your email address should be permanent, something you never change in your whole lifetime. It should be a vanity domain name. I hate to use that word vanity because there's nothing vain about it. If you're a company like Twit, we have our own domain a name. It's twit.tv, and we get email at twit.tv. Well, your family could have the same thing, your own business, uh, just you as an individual. When my kids were little, I registered their names, their domain names, so that they would, when they got to be a certain age, uh, have their own email address. You really would, it would be the ideal to have a single phone number and a single email address throughout life. One you could change but one that wouldn't tie you to any particular service. Well, that's what we're going to show you how to do today. At first, it starts off by getting your own domain name. There are lots of places you can do this. Google has a domain registrar. GoDaddy's the most famous. Our sponsor, Hover, is where I go. Uh, Hover.com. I get all my domains there. And as you can see, I have a lot of domains. Many, 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 many domains. So I could make any one of these be an email address. It just depends on, uh, you know, what I'm looking for. Let's take, a, let's take one that isn't currently set up as an email address, and I can show you. So you're going to buy a domain name, yourfamilyname.com. There's even a .email extension you could use. I use that, too. But um, let's use um, something uh, that would be good for an email. Ideally, it'd be like yourfamilylastname.com, because then you could set it up in such a way that it'd be Mary, Joe, Sally, and Bob. That would be very cool. Most registrars will offer email service. You can see Hover does as well. But this is going to be a paid email service. And you don't need to pay for this to do it. So for your convenience, uh, you can do that. Many companies like GoDaddy will even host your email for you. Honestly, I don't like to tie my email hosting to the domain registrar because the whole point of this is that I have one email address I can use anytime and it can forward it to any email provider I want. So if I want to use Yahoo Mail for a while and then get tired of it and go to Gmail, I can do that. Or go to something more secure like the encrypted Proton Mail, I can do that. Uh, you'll have to use an email provider that allows you to set up a custom domain. Most of them do. Uh, if not, you can just forward the mail to them. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So let's say I've decided I have Leoville, or I guess leolaporte.net. That's a pretty good one, right? And I want to get email at leolaporte.net. So you could pay for forwarding, as I said, or you can get pretty fancy and go into the domain name record and modify it. Now, this is a more advanced kind of a black diamond tip. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. But changing the MX record to point to an email provider will mean that email sent to this address will automatically get forwarded to that email provider. Once you've done that, all the mail that comes to leolaport.net in this case, even if it's Tony, Fred, Jim at leolaport.net will get forwarded to the email provider of my choice. What's nice is 
If I want to move, it's as easy as changing this MX record, and it will get forwarded somewhere else. I use a company called Fastmail, which, by the way, I highly recommend. Fastmail does their own DNS. So another solution to this would be to point leolaporte.net's domain to Fastmail. In fact, that's exactly what's happening right now. If I look at the overview and I go down here, I can change the name servers. When you first register with a registrar, they usually run the name servers, as is happening here, hover.com. But if I change the name servers to Fastmail, for instance, I can have Fastmail manage my domain record. This is actually great because it means that I own the name at hover.com, but Hover doesn't do anything. The name server, actually, I've, I've provided one that doesn't exist, but the name server is actually hosted by somebody else. Let's go back to Fastmail, and I'll show you where you can find out the information you need for that. And in Fastmail, it's in the settings. Any mail provider, many mail providers will do this kind of thing and uh, be able to help you set this up. In this case, Fastmail does its own domain hosting. In fact, for most of my mail, I actually use Fastmail. Uh, in fact, that's where leolaporte.com is. And the reason is uh, it's easy enough to change, to point the record here. And then once I've done that, uh, Fastmail does a lot of really nice features like DKIM and SPF to provide authentication. That's important because... These days, there's so much spam, many email providers will not accept inbound mail unless they can prove that it's coming from the domain it says it's coming from. That's what DKIM does. That's what SPF does. There's another system called DMARC. And it's really important if you're going to use email and an email provider that they support that. All the big ones do. And you can see Fastmail offers another uh, additional feature. I can accept mail addressed to leolaporte.com from any inbound address and automatically put it in the leolaporte.com mailbox. I can set up filters to do that. Uh, I can accept, uh, I can reject all mail. I can accept mail to any address, and that's what I usually do. So um, we can customize the DMS, DNS even more if you want to get really fancy. And this is where the, the special DMARC and other stuff is set up. This is really important. There's the DKIM. There's the SPF. This is all the email authentication. So it's really nice to have that. And you see I have that set up down below as well. So if I get email to leolaporte.com, any name at leolaporte.com, it's going to automatically, doesn't go to hover at all. It automatically goes straight to Fastmail and Fastmail processes it. That's a really nice feature of fast mail, but many email providers will do that. Our show today brought to you by LastPass. Your IT department has a big job these days. New threats, new regulations, lots of people working from home. Strong security is much more complex, but LastPass is great. It allows your employees to do their work securely, whether they're in the office or at home. LastPass never stores your master password. That means hackers can't get to it. LastPass uses the same security as banks and the military, so you know you're getting the best security possible. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to find out how they can help you. Lastpass.com slash twit. So you have a choice. The first step is to go to a registrar and pick any registrar you want. Um, it's fine to go to GoDaddy. They'll try to sell you, upsell you email services. Remember, you don't need those. All you want is the domain name. Then you go into the domain name settings and either change the domain hosting to an email provider if they offer that, Fastmail does, or change the MX record at GoDaddy to point to your email provider. Most cases, that will work fine too. You, it, worst case scenario, you can pay for email forwarding where it just bounces off GoDaddy or whoever the pro domain provider is and goes into the email box. That's another way to do it. The advantage of doing this, though, is your email will never again change. You don't have to ever tell anybody, I've got a new email. You can change your provider completely transparently. The address will be preserved. That's important. So if somebody sends something to leo at leolaporte.com, it will come into my fast mailbox, 
and I can filter on that, it will still say this email was sent to Leo at leolaporte.com. And in fact, I have many mailboxes, many different domains. I give out different domains to different people. It all ends up in the same inbox, but I'm able to filter on the inbound mail. One trick I use all the time is anytime I sign up for something, for instance, uh, I signed up for Verizon, I tell Verizon that my email is verizon at leolaporte.com. That way I can filter it, and I know if Verizon sells my name to anybody else, it'll say verizon at leolaporte.com, even if it's coming from another company. It's surprising. Most companies do not resell those email addresses, but I know the companies that do. And, of course, I can cancel those accounts if I wish to punish them. So it's nice, though, to have the filtering against who you signed up with. So I always have a domain set up so that I can use, when I sign up for a newsletter or sign up for a product, I can use that company's name at the domain name and uh, I can keep track of who has that email address. And it gives me a unique email address. When I signed up, I registered with Ford for my new Mustang Mach-E electric vehicle, which is coming in the fall. I gave them Mustang at laporte.email. So when I get anything to that email address, I know it's from Ford. It's easy to keep track of it. And it's kind of fun to have a custom domain like that. This is why you want to have your own domain and control it so that you can do your own email processing. It's really a much better way of doing it. You'll never have to change it again. The, the key is to have your own registrar do it yourself. Control that registrar. No need for the registrar to host your mail. You can host your mail anywhere you want. That's the point. You, there are three different ways to do it. You can change the DNS record to point to the mail, red, mail company if the mail company supports that. You can change the MX record to point to the mail hosting service if they support that. Or you could use the built-in forwarding many domain registrars offer, sometimes for a fee, usually a buck or two a month. Uh, it's really important if you're going to do this it's really important to understand how email works so you don't lose any email. So set it up and play with it and practice with it. Make sure everything's working properly before you give out this email address. I have a lot of email in my inboxes that's from myself just to say, is this working? Uh, but once you got it set up and working, then you can start to forward mail to it. And you'll have complete control of your email from then on. Highly recommend it. It doesn't usually cost very much to register a domain name. Most domain names are around $10 a year. If you want a really fancy custom domain name, sometimes you pay more. A .tv address, for instance, tends to be more expensive. There's some that are very expensive. Uh, .com is usually around $10 a year. Uh, I hope that helps. I hope it's not uh, too complicated. I didn't want to be too detailed, so I hope I wasn't too vague. Um, but if you have any further questions, don't forget you can always email me with your questions. Ask the tech guy at twit.tv. Yes, that's a custom domain. Well, that's it for this edition of Ask the Tech Guy, and I'll see you next Monday. Have a great geek week. I'm Jason Howell, host of Hands On Android, where each week I take a look at the Android operating system and really dive deep into what it can do for you and how it can improve your quality of life, whether it be tips and tricks on how to use it better, whether it can be little known secrets that open up a world of possibilities. So many topics to dive into, including your emails. Subscribe by going to twit.tv slash HOA. We'll see you there. Stumped on a nasty tech conundrum? Email ask the tech guy at twit.tv.